The spectre of a hung parliament has caused both major parties to rule out governing with the support of the Greens. It's a particularly tricky issue for the ALP as it's struggled in recent years to stem the flow of disillusioned Labor voters to the Greens over issues like asylum seekers and same-sex marriage. One seat where Labor has a huge fight on its hands is Graindler, the inner city Sydney electorate held by frontbencher Anthony Albanese. His political correspondent, Sabra Lane. <laughs> Maybe we could win it back together. Eye of the Tiger, man. Well, this is tough. I, uh, I like fighting Tories. That's what I do. I'm Anthony Albanese, and I'm the Deputy Prime Minister, and you're watching Rain! Rainler has always returned Labor members to this house. <laughs> The Greens want to make that last statement made during Anthony Albanese's first speech to Parliament 20 years ago, ancient history. Mr Albanese, or Albo as he's known in Labor circles, is fighting for his electoral survival, with the Greens determined to snatch his seat. He's loved by the Labor membership, especially for his honesty during the Rudd-Gillard leadership wars. I have devoted uh, my life to advancing the cause of Labor. We're not in a position... For but the 20-year veteran's not giving up without a fight. I'll continue to be out there uh, fighting Tories, as my slogan goes, whilst the Greens political party choose uh, to fight progressives like myself and Tanya Polipasek. It's great to be here. Uh, in the electorate of Grainler with So the, uh, confident to the Greens, the party's leader, Richard Di Natale, kicked off his campaign on Monday in the inner western Sydney seat of Grainler. Well, I share my predecessor Bob Brown's views that we're not just there to keep the bastards honest, we're there to get rid of them. Uh, and our job is to make sure that we get the views of the community represented ahead of those special interests that make those huge corporate donations to both of the old parties. But Mr Albanese has got some unusual allies backing him in. News Corp's Daily Telegraph this morning splashed its endorsement across the front page. A complete turnaround from three years ago when it portrayed him as a Nazi. You can call me 131. Shock jock Ray Hadley's also fighting to save Mr Albanese. I haven't asked for anyone's support except for the people in my electorate. I'll be judged on what I stand for. Turnbull ministers are going all out to highlight the risk of a potential minority Labor-led Greens government. They'd have to consult uh, with the Deputy Treasurer, if it's uh, a Labor government, in, from the Greens. Adam Bant as the Deputy Treasurer of the country under a Labor-Greens government. My youngest is three months and that makes me feel so oh. sentimental. Mr Albanese has gone on the offensive against his Greens opponent in Graindler, Jim Casey, labelling him a Trotsky socialist with views extreme to the National Greens ethos. Mr Casey, who's led the New South Wales branch of the Fire Brigade's Employees Union for seven years, believes the union movement is a sleeping giant. Really, to be perfectly blunt about it, it has the power to hurt people financially in a way that most of our social movements don't. Mr Casey is sitting alongside Adam Bant and Green Senator Lee Rhiannon in the video, titled One Term Tony. It was recorded during Tony Abbott's reign as Prime Minister. I would prefer to see Tony Abbott return as Prime Minister with a Labor movement that was growing, with an anti-war movement that was disrupting things in the streets, with a strong and vibrant women's movement, indigenous movement and a climate change movement that was actually starting to disrupt the production of coal. I'd prefer to see Abbott as a Prime Minister in that environment than Bill Shorten as Prime Minister without it. It's quite an extraordinary comment for someone who wants to go into Parliament to say that they'd rather have Tony Abbott as Prime Minister uh, rather than uh, Bill Shorten because there'll be better demonstrations. That, to me, says it all about why he is not fit to be in office. The Greens candidate is defiant. So it, was a, it was a figure of speech, really, but I, I guess what I'm saying is that I, I don't think power simply resides in Canberra. It also resides in our communities, resides in our workplaces, and we need to be taking up questions about the kind of world we want to see there, the kind of future we want to see there, as well as what we're saying to our politicians. We need to change those circumstances. Thank you. 
He also defends his comments praising the proliferation of protest. From memory, I think I then went on to say, and that would almost be unimaginable if we had a fired up movement that Tony Abbott would be Prime Minister. So it was a figure of speech. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that uh, let's turn it around. I have very little confidence that a Bill Shorten-led government is going to take the kind of steps necessary to make this society as wonderful as it can be. You know, we're a rich country and we should be doing better. I have very little confidence that a Bill Shorten-led government will do that unless it's being encouraged to and pushed to by social movements. The views of Jim Casey are pretty orthodox Trotskyist views, uh, saying that the more people are oppressed, the more they'll rise up. Well, I'm someone who doesn't want to see people oppressed so that they rise up. I'm someone who wants to see people in my electorate and indeed throughout the country lifted up. The Greens have a long-term strategy over two to three elections to win a swag of seats across the country. As well as Graindler, they believe they can take Richmond in New South Wales. In the West, the party's targeting Fremantle. And in Victoria, it wants to build on the Adam Bant held seat of Melbourne and claim Higgins, Batman, Melbourne Ports and Wilkes. It's always going to be tough to make that first breakthrough. If they don't turn green at this election, uh, some of them will turn green at the next one or the next one after that. So we take a long-term view. But Wills could be a fascinating battle at this election with a potential comeback by a former member. When Labor hero Bob Hawke retired, his seat was unexpectedly won by independent Phil Cleary. There was a touch of arrogance about it, I think, at times. Two decades on, he's weighing up a return. I just think we've got to have a better narrative in the parliaments. When Ted Mack and I were elected, it changed the face of politics. Since the 90s, more and more independence, the Xenophon factor in South Australia, public debates changed. But we've got to drive it further. We've got to have alternate narratives to the stultifying two-party system that we have. That's our only hope and I would really love to be part of that if, I, if it would work. Mr Cleary's sister was murdered 30 years ago by an ex-boyfriend. He's a long campaigner on domestic violence and would focus on that issue as well as refugees and sustainable development. But Mr Cleary says if the Liberals preference the Greens, he'd have no chance. Look, if the Liberals preference the Greens, the logic and the math say the Greens are a really good chance to win, just as I won in the 90s with those preferences. So, all the best. He'll decide by Friday. <laughs> Cyberlane reporting.